four, five, six, three hundred and twelve million five hundred seventeen thousand nine hundred eighty-two. Uh, actually, I wasn't really counting up that high. Okay, it looks like uh, we are live now. Welcome to the stream. Today we, we will be continuing with our attempt to answer the questions about lunar eclipses on Jupiter, uh, which are basically shadowed eclipses on, um, which are basically solar eclipses on Jupiter's moons, but lunar eclipses of Jupiter are visible everywhere. Um, we got a, We didn't really get a reply to this, we meaning me, didn't really get a reply to this, but what's interesting is there's this fantastic comment um, here uh, that if we look at the um, look at the derivative with respect to phi and set phi equal to zero it is with the derivative is zero also meaning we have a local max or a min and it turns out to be a local max uh, what's interesting about that is um, it actually raises another interesting question which I'm going to put down here um, can Mathematica give partial answers? See, because it's really useful to know that the derivative can be zero when phi is zero. Uh, even if Mathematica can't solve every single zero, it would be nice if it could say, hey, there's one zero right here. And it turns out this is due to a very simple reason, as this guy points out. Um, the expression for the derivative is basically something multiplied by sine of phi. And so setting phi equal to zero makes sine of phi zero, makes the whole thing zero. It's very, very nice. And I did say I suspected that, which I think I mentioned in a previous stream, uh, that uh, I did think the maximum would occur at the equator, uh, or you know wh what we're calling the equator. And for us, by the way, the equator is, uh, is going to be this, we're looking sort of down in the plane. Uh, this is the equator. This, uh, this two dimension, we're in the two-dimensional model, this would be the equator, the same plane that S and T are in. And um, the fact that the um, the maximum answer is the maximum values in there is not that surprising because that is that is sort of the um, the portion of the planet that sticks out the most towards T and S because they're both in this plane. It also turns out something I discovered, which isn't as useful, um, is that the uh, function is symmetric in phi. In other words. Uh, it's an even function in phi. It has the same value at plus 30 degrees north latitude as it does at minus 30 degrees north latitude. So what this means is that we only need to optimize for theta. Uh, it turns out that's still difficult, but if we use our um, gradient vector like we've been using yesterday, uh, we might be able to nail this. We might be able to get this problem actually solved or close enough to solved that we can use it to actually answer the original question and a lot of other questions about Jovian lunar eclipses. Jovian, by the way, is the adjective meaning of or relating to Jupiter. I use it sort of uh, without always explaining it. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and confirm what I've said. If I think we can, we can actually do this. Even though Mathix isn't that great, I think we can actually, um, we can actually uh, get some answers out of it. I, we can show what we're trying to show. Um, and it's not from here, but of course the uh, the trick is to find out where the the heck I'm doing. So oh, 3D. There we go. Um, and I think that's what I meant to do. Um, and I think well, I have no idea where I put it because it's part of my sort of uh, okay. And I think there's a place where I think this might actually be under a, a BC get stack BC eclipse because I did print out the uh, the value of the derivative. Changed on disk, yes, we want to reread it. Okay. Um, and I think I said just for our own edification here, uh, we, we put down the values. I don't know where they are, though. Um, we put down this long, ugly formula for, yeah, here it is. Overlap d phi is this thing. Okay, we're going to try to do this a little bit better. Um, we're going to try to go from first principles. And so we will say, so I guess this is a, I don't know if I really want to go for first principles. Um, I mean, just showing that it's, um, getting to this point isn't trivial either. I mean, this is basically a lot of simplifications here. Um, I'm going to do something stupid, and I'm actually going to see if we can get it back from over here. So, da -da -da -da. Okay, this is the non-generic case, and we did do the generic case somewhere. Here it is. Um, given S and T the eclipse value, oh, you know what? I may not never have done this in uh, Mathix uh, using uh, the the model where uh, SR is at zero. I, I might have though. 
meaning sorry where s is on the x-axis um, good stuff so we we actually let's go ahead and take a look though real quick I I um well mostly I want to waste your time I mean that is the real goal here um, so let's do that and because um, I think this very simple thing we can actually do with um, we can actually do with uh, with mathics but I only if we've sort of done part of it before I don't want to necessarily get into the whole um, the whole the whole rigmarole if we have to restart with the whole our model where we rotated so that S is on the x-axis. <whistles> wow. Best fit prediction. Okay, so we were doing something there with something different c for a different kind of a project that we're not looking at right now. Wow. I've just gotten into this. I think I've just gotten into what they... Don't, uh, not a donut hole, rather a... Uh, uh, there's an expression for it. The rabbit hole. I've fallen down the rabbit hole. Um... Oh wow, okay. Distances. Without less loss of generality, we can quantify that this plane. Oh yeah, okay. And I got this far before stopping, I think. Uh, let's see if it's somewhere else. I, I'm beginning to think that, in fact, I do not have. Um, portions, I'm almost sure, doesn't do what I want. Uh, that was way, way. That was one of the earlier ones. In fact, we can look at this and see which one is the most recent. Um, all of these are fairly recent, but I think if BC Eclipse Diagram doesn't have it, we're not going to have it. And I think this is more to draw the uh, the, um, the diagram, and it's less to... Um, oh, hang on. Uh, they can necessarily form... We, we, well, okay, okay, we can, we can do this, yes. Theta equals G7, okay. Point theta, vec2 theta. Whoa, 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 we might have this. Um... Okay, that's angular separation, but that we still need angular radiuses, and we need to combine them. Mm, that's still not what we want, even though it says under over F2154. What we really want, we don't really want that. Because our formula is a little bit more complicated than just subtracting off the angular radii from the angular separation. Um, the problem is, I don't, know if, I don't think we actually put that formula in here. We derived it after we did this. So... We're just going to use the form that we have of, um, you'll have to trust me on this, which is actually fairly useless now. Uh, that this is the overlap value, which is not really that great. Um, but, and we are bringing in BC lib. So the overlap value is this. Whoa. Um, did I mess that up? I did mess that up. Okay, hang on. Um, Mathematica allows you to do what I'm just doing here, um, but apparently Mathix does not. You can't have a blank line between a, a name and its d definition. So I'll do this, and then I will do this, and I will go ahead and declare the derivatives, although I don't know if it's going to actually be able to figure them out. Okay. Okay. All right, so overlap value d phi at theta and phi is given by this dun 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 hideous th oh okay then actually doesn't even bother to simplify that's pretty bad but what if it's a theta comma zero wow I love the way that it, it tries to put a simplify in front of it but you'll notice that the thing it's simplifying is zero so that's pretty cool and now something even simpler hopefully uh, just the overlap value itself at theta phi no I didn't mean to do that Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that either. I'm going to just print out the value. Um, okay. And then if we subtract it from the overlap value of theta minus phi, we will get zero, hopefully, um, because those are also equal. So those are the two things that are going to help us out today, um, knowing those two things, and, and using gradients. And I think we're pretty close to solving the problem. Okay, so, um, and that's a to-do list there. Derv is for phi is zero at the equator. Uh, value is symmetric in plus minus phi. And we did look at the comment given answers. And now we're going to go on to the gradients. Um, and I guess I'm supposed to remind you that this is one of a series of really bad uh, live streams. So if you want to understand it more, that's too bad because you can't. But if you want to see other videos in this series, you can go to YouTube and the BC Coding channel and look at them. But they won't help you. 
and nothing will help you. You cannot be helped. This, I cannot help anyone. That's, it goes against my credo. Or maybe my creed. I don't know which, which one is the one that, that's like a motto. It goes against that. Um, so anyway. Um, so here in this function, um, that is eclipse around the world, um, we have basically said that, oh, what are we doing? Given a time and three bodies, we print the value of the eclipse at various points on the surface of Q. Well, that's what we used to do. At, at some point, this function is going to tell us the maximum and minimum eclipse on Q, um, but we, because we're going to use it as sort of a, um, uh, as sort of a function that we can put into GFQ, uh, we will need to restrict it to one value, which we can do by just adding an, an other parameter uh, that is, you know, um, spice int um, val or something. Something that we can just switch on saying if val is zero, we'll return the minimum. If val is one, we'll return the maximum or, or something of that nature. Um, because the eclipse occurs, uh, partial eclipse occurs when the um, minimum eclipse, the minimum value of the eclipse is less than zero. There's a partial eclipse somewhere on the planet. And a maximum eclipse, uh, a total eclipse occurs on the whole planet if the maximum value is less than negative one. And there's in between cases there where part of the planet is experiencing a total and part is experiencing a uh, partial. It's even possible that part is not experiencing either a total or a, you know, one part total, other part nothing, other part partial. There are several cases there. Okay, so we're going to use the two vector because we did all this. I'm trying to see if we can shrink down any of this. Um, one thing we can do, of course, is get rid of some of the printfs, but we probably want to keep them around very briefly. Um, so what we looked at last time was the separation data derivative. I'm sorry, just making sure that it hadn't changed. Uh, separation data derivative, which is basically saying at the at the center point of the planet, uh, what are how do we point to the maximum increase? And then we use that to get a gradient. We extend that gradient to the surface, and we use that extended gradient to compute the maximum value. And it was doing a pretty good job because we compared it to the um, to the uh, Oh yeah, we compared it to the printout of the la longitude and latitude, and you know, we, which are sampled only at every one degree, but close enough to give us an idea of where the maximum would be, and it does match our, uh, it does match the the maximum and minimum we computed uh, using the uh, using the gradient. Now, of course, one problem here is uh, if the gradient is pointing in this direction, the negative gradient is pointing to the dark side of the planet, which is not useful to us. Uh, so we have to sort of find out, we actually kind of have to look at the uh, plus and minus 90 degrees here. This is, this here is zero longitude, this here is 90, this here is minus 90, or the reverse of that, I forget which one. But in order to find a maximum that's useful, we're going to have to look at uh, 90 minus 90 longitude, um, whatever the gradient gives us. We might look at zero just for fun, although, the, the, you know, unless S and T are perfectly lined up, zero is not going to be the maximum. And we have to not look at the negative gradient because that that can go into a, a portion of the planet where that's already dark. So when we do this, when we get the final answer going, we will look at minus 90 and 90 as our limit limiting values, and we'll look at the uh, gradient value and maybe the center value, um, just to make sure it's not you know just as a test. And and of those, we will select the minimum or and maximum value to return to whatever program is requesting them. Okay, so that, that's what we're going to do. Right now, though, <laughs> previously on Seinfeld, uh, so that's next time on Seinfeld, I should have said. Uh, one problem here is we've actually only been looking at this um, at the middle of an eclipse. We have this, um, we have this, um, and also we've been using, currently we're using min corner eclipse to determine when an eclipse occurs, uh, which is not accurate, of course. We've, we've figured that out. So at some point, we will need to change this function as well to use the uh, the eclipse around the world function uh, to find where the you know whether there's an eclipse or not the min and max eclipse, uh, but also right here we're using the middle of the eclipse as defined by inaccurate the Bayman corner eclipse. We should definitely be testing on. Ooh, okay, I will reload. Um, we should definitely be testing on other points. So let's go ahead and right now just test on. I'm gonna be careful here. Let's test on beginning. I suspect end will be symmetric. But let's test on beginning to see if um, 
you know, our, our gradient guess is accurate as compared to the latitude longitude listing uh, listing answer. So let's do this. I had to make some changes to get this to compile on my main machine, but I hopefully made them in a way that doesn't break it working on this machine. Uh, and I didn't. Wow, I'm actually impressed with myself. Okay. So VC occultations. Damn it. I'm trying to just cheat and use one uh, way we've run it before. Okay, and this is we're not going to sort it, but this is, I think, one lunar eclipse it gives us. Uh, data for origin, temp, data from grad point, um, SDD. That's still really, really... Um, hmm. Okay, according to this, it goes between 0.087... And what's interesting is we don't actually care about um, where these values occur, at least not now. We just want to know uh, what the max and min are. We don't care where they occur. Uh, I mean, we might later on, but for right now, we don't, which makes our lives a little bit easier. And Okay, so now we're going to do the uh, sort minus. Let's see what this does. So minus 1.8982. Five seven. It's not quite perfect, which bugs me, but we'll worry about that later. And then going all the way up, 99%. And we go up to minus 870963, uh, which is fine, because the, the actual value might be a little bit lower than the, the values on the latitudes and longitudes. Okay, so it looks like it's working pretty good for the beginning of this one eclipse that we're looking at. Um, and it's not really the beginning, of course, it's the when the center point is eclipsed. Um, it's interesting, though, the data from origin is minus 1.38. You would think um, the data from the origin would be just minus 1, because it's the instant that you have a total eclipse at the center, when the umbra hits the center. So it's a little bit strange that it's, it's, it's already somewhat more eclipsed. But I'm going to blame um, Eclipse Corner for that. I'm going to just say with the min eclipse corner is a bad function. We're going to pretend like it, uh, like uh, this doesn't bother us. Um, and we will, of course, be testing our results against uh, a lot of things. But uh, one other thing we can test against are actually transits of Mercury and Venus, um, because those are technically a kind of eclipse in the sense we're using the word here. Okay, but now, wait, did I do something foolish? And it is currently no, I did. We did. We did recompile. Okay, so now we're going to do this with the uh, the end time of the eclipse. See what we get, and see how accurate our gradient method is, which seemed to be pretty good last time. And this should be in Astro. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, didn't have a problem compiling, which I didn't expect. I did expect it to compile fine. Again, it's worrisome that the data from the origin is not minus one here. Uh, data from the gradient point is this. Um, so here we're looking for um, between and this number. So let's see if that works by doing a sort. Uh, minus 1.94. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. So that's really, really bad. Unless, hang on. 89 longitude. No, this is actually nowhere near the, um, this is nowhere near the maximum that we've computed. So, trouble in paradise. Uh, so our gradient goes in which direction? Let's do the, again, it's very, very close. To, okay, that's our positive gradient, but our negative goes very close to the surface. Um, data from gradient point, data from the negative gradient point is Minus 1.94. Did I? Oh, did I actually use the wrong? I did use the wrong numbers. Sorry. No. Uh, the uh, the the. It's between the this value here and this value here. Not the data from the origin. It has nothing to do with it. So sorry. So whew, almost screwed that up. Okay. Let's take a look again. So the minimum here is 1.94. You know this very very close to this. A little bit lower than that, which bugs me, but not enough to um, 
not enough to uh, actually worry about it too much. I mean, one, one problem is we are using estimate of the derivative. We're not, you know, computing it uh, analytically. That's a big word, huh? All right, and the minimum eclipse here is minus 9.20418 versus minus, yeah, so very, very close here. Um, so it looks like it's working, at least in terms, assuming our other functions are correct, our testing functions are correct, it looks like we are in, a, we are in good shape here. Um, so now, and by the way, hello to the two users in chat. I won't say your names unless you want me to. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, uh, or if you just want to lurk, that's cool. Up to you. Okay. So, so, so we do see this is working, and the only problem I'm having here, and this is something that maybe, this is the kind of thing like programmers throw themselves against and die. Um, is I want to get slightly more accurate results, so I'm going to use a smaller value of, uh, of for the derivative. Here I think I say QR over a thousand or something, and yeah. Now the problem is because, uh, well QR is actually pretty big, so this should be okay. I'm going to use QR over 10,000 and see if we get better results. Um, and also, um, this is a waste of time, and, and I don't care because I have well, I mean, I have time until I die, and when I die, I don't care. So, but it is not really a great practice what I'm doing here because, um, because the the level of accuracy that's going to increase here is going to be very minimal. So let's see what we had here. Okay, we had um, and oh, we have the same numbers actually now, so that didn't help at all. Um, Okay, now I'm going to do something really stupid. I'm going to just use the value on the surface um, as our gradient, which of course means this this really I, this probably won't work. But if it does, I'll be very very surprised. Okay. So here we now have the data from the gradient point to be the same, and the negative data. To be, ooh, awesome! This, this is like freaking weird. It's also weird that this is th these two numbers are not exact opposites of each other. Um, wait a minute. Uh, um, hmm. This number and this number are very similar to each other. Not cool. They're supposed to be negatives of each other. So I must now look into that. We also need to be a little bit better about what we're printing. I think we're printing a little bit too much here. So that's the rotated, th those are fine. I think we're printing something twice is the issue. So those two numbers are fine. Okay, so this is um, separation derivative. Um, okay. This is just the separation derivative. So I don't know why we have to, um, data from origin, data from grad point, that's fine too. Um, okay. Um, that's strange. Um, I have no idea why we're printing temp here. I don't think it's useful to us. Oh, it's because this gives us, um, okay, this gives us after we've done the, um, uh, rotate, okay, this, this just to be the negative of what we have here. Okay, I'm getting confused. Okay, so the separation data derivative is this. We create the, we use the S temporary to hold the uh, value, we, we basically move S and T uh, so that they are, uh, Right, yes, we move S and T so that it's as though we had moved the origin to the surface. So there's the data from the origin, there's the data from the grade po grid point, the, gr the grad point, oh, the gradient point. Yeah, in other words, the point on the surface that is, um, that is, uh, let's see. Yes, the point on the surface uh, that I, I guess is towards the two planets. Okay, that's fine though. Um, then we have the data from the negative grade point, which because we've now um, 
flipped everything, and we, we're doing sets here. We're not doing uh, we're not doing anything. Um, separation data derv. Uh, oh right, right. This is um, what the data derivative looks like if you're on the um, if you're on the negative surface. Why right? this is these two things are not opposites. They are not opposites. Okay, that's maybe why we're being weird. Yeah, this is actually the data from um, before we've moved the the temp values. In fact, um, yeah, this is these are the values from uh, the origin. Um, okay. Okay, so this is this is really bad. So this is the SDD at the origin and the data at the origin, so maybe we should have put these a little bit together. Because this is all before we've even moved, uh, we don't even need to use temp, I mean, we need to use stemp or ttemp here. Um, so temp is, yeah, temp is the SDD at the origin, then we go through and do this, and so then we should have, um, Jesus Christ, data from grad point, and then data grad, SDD rather, um, at grad point, where this would be, um, mm, okay. So we're looking for the derivative at the um, at the point when we've gone in the positive grid point direction. I don't think we're computing it anywhere, though. I think maybe this is a mistake here. We compute it here, but we don't compute it after we make the first transformation. Um, so do I care? Is the question. Um, so this is an SDD. This is actually the when you hit the um, when you hit the surface. What, what's going on? Um, okay. So this, and I guess that was my way of checking to see that the um, the uh, derivative once you hit the surface should point outwards. So there's nothing you can do in terms of changing longitude uh, to increase or decrease the value. Um, but that is just weird. Data from origin. So data from origin is useful. Data from grad point is also useful. I don't know what the hell this means now. Uh, and then we go subtract everything, and then data from the negative grad point is also useful because we are uh, we have now uh, set s temp and t temp to be the uh, negatives of the vectors they were before essentially and I don't think we need to compute the separation data well if we're going to do it we have to be consistent so we're not going to do it here I can do this and yeah I don't think we care about this anymore let me double I'm going to add bc git now even though I did earlier so we have this all saved but but I, we have it saved from yesterday so it should be fine. Okay. All right. Getting back to this, um, and I guess we don't even need to do this anymore because we're no longer c concerned about the rectangular and spherical coordinates, unless we're going to use them here, which we might. Um, no, we're not. We're, we were just going to print them at one point. Okay. So now. I'm going to go crazy here, and I'm going to assume that this function is quote unquote accurate enough. Um, and it's going to now return the max and min eclipse values as we discussed. And we do need to, of course, still check the minus 90 plus 90 degrees because we still need it to be on the correct side of the, uh, the planet. Okay, but let's, uh, let's, we're jumping ahead a little bit, and uh, this is really not a great idea. We're not doing enough tests, but I don't care. So that's how you fix that. Given an ephemeris time, a light generating object, t a Q, um, a flag val zero equals give min eclipse, one equals give max eclipse returns. Now it's going to actually return stuff. The minimum or maximum value of the eclipse on Q at time AET for portions of Q facing, uh, I guess we, we said object S, facing S. Oh yeah, that's what we really want. So this will now return spice double. 
Eclipse around the world, spice, 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 int. And I, I, I do want the flag val to be not Boolean, but a spice int. Okay, so we're, we're going to end up computing both of them and then just returning the one they want. Uh, spice int all of this crap. Um, and we're going to trim out uh, unused um, variables as we go along. Position from QDS, you're good. Um, no, we're actually doing it now. Use two vector create a frame where s is in the x-axis. Um, comma. Create. Okay, we'll just say create frame where s is the x-axis. Um, and apply. Fr oh man, no, we we're not. We're creating a matrix. Is what we're doing. Uh, that puts s on the x-axis and t in the xy plane and apply that matrix to s and t, but I think that's kind of obvious. So that's, we're doing that here, and we get s rot and t rot. We do not need to print that. Um, I think I actually did functionalize that. That was my, I did that. I'm awesome. Uh, I'm going to kill myself and do this as one million, and I get the feeling I'm going to regret doing this very much, but we can change it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to compute the um, compute gradient um, at origin, which is cool. And okay. Now I'm still going to do this for right now. One of these directions is going to be incorrect. It's going to be pointing outside the the planet. Um, it's sorry. It's going to be pointing to the night side of the planet, so it's not useful to us. Uh, so we compute this. Uh, so we first of all create s temp variables, which are basically um, you know we move the we move the origin to it turns out to the positive side because of the weird way we're doing things, um, and then to the negative side, and so data from bread. Okay, so this is actually good. We're not going to have to, of course, print it. We are going to get rid of this hideous thing now. Um, it's helpful the way it says matches this. Matches spice stone. Okay, good, good, good. This is what we want. And we actually do need to now return something because we are, and for right now we're going to return um, zero. But we fix that. Okay, in the other two places, we're going to need to compute the uh, the the um, the uh, separation data derivative. Uh, we don't. Yeah, we do need to compute it at the origin. Um, the other two points we're going to need to con uh, uh, compute um, the separation data is going to be at plus and minus ninety degrees. Which, I, okay, okay, okay. Compute separation data at where sun is rising setting. In other words, the the two points, these two extrema points on equator. So the two extrema points here, now with that is just going to be separation data. I hate having to create new, uh, okay, let's see, so this variable, this um, this vector here is going to be very simple because it is Going to I think this is actually trivial, so let's do this. Um, spice double east side. So the east side of the planet is going to just be. I remember to do a zero this time, a QR zero this time. So the east side of the planet is just going to be um, where uh, x is zero. Yeah, and then the west side is going to be the uh, opposite. That's not too bad. Um, Yeah, all right. That's not too bad. Um, although these are arrays, so we probably should put threes in front of them. Okay. The west separation is going to be the separation data for um, um, yeah, the rotated coordinates of Oh, no, 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 because of the way we're doing this, we have to actually change uh, where um, where S is. 
So we can do that. Um, um, so these aren't really the east side. These are the east view and the west view of the S and T. So we're going to be a bit careful there. So the uh, the normal view from the center is just going to be. Oh Jesus Christ! We have to do it for two. Uh, east view for S and the east view for T. So the normal view of S is um, S rot zero, S rot one, S rot two. And the normal view for T is going to be T rot zero, T rot one, and T rot two, obviously. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this to the um, equivalent for, these aren't the correct values yet, of course. Da -da. And we'll just say, so the west view. For the east view, um, because our y value is going to be positive qr0, the yeah, the let's see, the z value and the y x value will be the same as they are for the origin. So this will be minus qr0, minus qr0, plus qr0, plus qr0. So these are the modified vectors uh, for the view from the west and east sides. So now, separation data, and so let's call this um, uh, spice double west sep. Be able to see why people invented programming languages other than C. And this will be from east view s, the um, radius doesn't change, east view t, that radius doesn't change. Okay, and then east sep is going to be the same thing except for probably going to put left view there. East view is going to be the same thing except for from the east. Okay, and those are probably good values to compute because those are going to be sort of our maximal. Um, those are going to be our bounding values uh, from the derivative. So let's go ahead and just print them out for right now. East sep percent f. Oh, this is really unnecessary, but we'll do it. West sep. West sep, east sep. Right side, north side, south side, east side. Uh, sounds like a song. Okay, so those are the two extrema values. Now we're going to compute the gradient. Um, the, the positive gradient. And we're very close here. And the negative gradient, and we're going to compute the separation data from those two. But one of these is going to have a um, negative value. And that's, that's going to be, uh, have a negative x value. Um, so what we want to do here, okay, let's look at it this way. But what we're going to do here is we're going to check to see if the temp zero, the x value of temp, the return ve uh, vector, is less than zero. And if it is, we're just going to flip it in place. We're just going to make all the variables of, uh, of temp, the ne all the array positions of temp negative. So then we have a positive x value. That's what we're going to use to determine the, um, the maximum or minimum, as the case may be. All right, so now let's go ahead and see if we still haven't broken anything, which I'm sure we have. Uh, expected expression before 4? Uh, we've commented that code out, dude. Um, the only problem is if I've got... M no, this should be fine. Did I not save this? All right, let's try it again. Okay, either I'm not doing um, C commenting out correctly, or I, I've got like a double comment in here, so I do not. Um, C, multi-line comment. Pretty sure I'm correct, though. <gasps> oh, I'm not correct. I was thinking of Pascal. I'm a moron. Yes, I'm an idiot. There, that's the C comment structure. All right. Um, yeah, and now we are going to start getting rid of our unnecessary variables. 
uh, because we are now um, we're now going to try to trim this function down to do what we want. We do have older copies, so we don't need to worry too much. So let's see which variables are unused here. Um, set data, s pause, all that crap. Because um, I think we've replaced set data with um, with the temp variable. Oh no, we've replaced it with east side, west side view. S pause, uh, colat, s pause r, all that stuff. I think the same is going to be true for the t variables. Um, t pause, yep, the t variables also. This is the cleanup phase. Um, we definitely need the matrix, I'm pretty sure. The matrix! Q temp is no longer used. Interesting. And then too few arguments to function because, of course, now we are we are taking a val in there as well. Um, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and fix that other issue, BC occultation C. We have to call it with, you know, one root. Oh, it's, it's not really changes because when you do a touch, Emacs thinks it's been changed. All right, let's see if we can do it now without even getting an error. Uh, unused variable Q temp, and I should have, I actually saw that earlier and didn't do anything about it. Um, no Q temp for you. Okay. Gorgeous. And now let's see if it actually runs. Good, no latitude. Uh, east sep, uh, west sep. Um, that's vaguely interesting. Um, that it's point maybe because we're at the beginning of the eclipse, the gradient point is pointing towards um, east or west instead of towards the the um, I guess what technically would be the the zero degree, the prime meridian of the planet. Um, let's see. Separation data derv, do that from there, from the um, negative gradient point. I guess we should probably print out what the gradient point actually is. That That's not too bad. Um, that's not really a gradient point, it's just the gradient, actually. And we'll see if it actually does point towards the east and west axes at the beginning of the eclipse. So the gradient point is, oh... Calling the gradient point temp when we're using it like this makes me unhappy. It's only purely um, aesthetic, but we will go ahead and call it uh, grad. We're going to call it gradient because that is what we're using it to measure now. Um, so temp... And here it's the grad, it's the gradient. And then we're going to subtract off the gradient, or add in the gradient. And of course, grad can also mean a grad school student, I guess, uh, who often become temps in the real world. So that could be a kind of a thing there. All right. Um, yeah, let's see what this does. And this would be nice if we were to actually print something. Alrighty, let's take a look at this sucker now. And why did I just do control BB? Because I am trying to use screen where it doesn't exist. Okay, beautiful. Ran without problems, and we don't need to less it because we're not printing on a big list. Okay, ESEP, WESEP, gradient. Um, yeah, I guess gradient is very much towards the Y axis in each direction, it's not towards the X axis. Uh, and it may just be because we're at the start of the eclipse, I don't know. Uh, data for gradient, data for negative gradient point. Um, and because we're right at the axes, these, these values are very, very similar to each other. Um, let's try this from the middle of the eclipse again. I'm hoping that uh, if, if it's the same, I'm going to be worried a little bit. Uh, oh, that was at the end of the eclipse, I guess, but that similarly that's okay. If now, in the middle of the eclipse, it's like that. We, we probably have some issues. Um, and, and we probably will, actually. Yep. But, but maybe it's always the case that one of the edges is the um, max and min eclipse. It, it does have the sort of unusual property 
if we go back to our diagram here, um, if we've lost our diagram here, problem here is I might have actually no longer be running the server. Yeah, screw that. We have an image actually that we can use. Um, Eclipse diagram. See, it even has a good, cool name. Okay. So the the idea might be that over here, over here, just because of the oddness of the way things are, we might always have a max or min eclipse. I find that hard to believe, but but I mean, the angular radii are m okay here. The separation is less than it is here because if you go here, you're moving closer to them and the separation is higher. So it's not completely unbelievable, but I'm not happy about it. Uh, but again, we will be testing with real data, so it's not it's not going to be like. Uh, we're not shooting in the dark here. So the gradient, data from gradient, data from negative gradient. Okay, um, getting pretty close here to being able to return a value and then use GFQ to search for a value instead of using min corner eclipse, which we've decided is wrong. Okay, so let's do this here. Um, all right, well, let's just do this. If gradient has negative X value, uh, flip all gradient signs. Okay. If grad zero less than zero, then for int i equal zero, i less than three, i plus plus, grad i times equals minus one, and if n four. Okay. So that's always going to choose the the positive gradient. Uh, which means we don't actually need to, um, okay, crap. Yeah, this is okay. And then we have the data from the gradient point is, um, uh, spice double grad value. Grad value. Okay, um, and we don't need the data from the negative grade point because it should be um, not the negative what we had, but it sh it's not useful to us now because we know that that point is uh, where the sun's already not shining, so to speak. <laughs> Sounds dirty. Okay, so now what we need is we need, depending on if val is 0 or 1, we need the min or the max of uh, ESEP, WESEP, um, and grad val. So if something's wrong... Do I have an extra parenthesis? I no, I did have an extra parenthesis. Okay. If val equal equals zero, zero is smaller than one, so we return the minimum value. Um, and I'm pretty sure this isn't going to work because uh, min can only handle two arguments at a time. Grad val, west sep, east sep. I'm also pretty sure the whole thing's not going to work because there's this has been uh, there, there's some big mistake I've made. Else, if val equal equal one return max grad val west sep east sep um, else we're going to return a minus one that's actually a terrible value to return we're going to return uh, we need to return something that says something's gone wrong um, although in theory we should be throwing an error here Let's return something that will really fuck with people. Okay. So now we actually have a return value. Let's see if this um, compiles. And I don't expect it to. Um, implicit direct declaration of function min. The hell? Oh, it might be error infinity und undeclared. So we'll just return something that's equivalent to infinity. Okay, and I'm afraid, I think, in order to do this, you have to do it like this. You have to call min twice. So they take the minimum of the first two, then the minimum of that with the third. The same thing, but just what C cares about. No, it doesn't like min. Um, where the hell did the C min function go? Oh. I think we talked about this before, yeah. Um, uh, 
Well, let's see how it's done. Maybe we can, uh, we can, um, Okay, well, it doesn't tell us what the macro is equal to. That's not helpful. So we need basically. Um, it's ugly. I mean, we can go through them and figure out which one's the smallest and which one's the biggest. But that's ugly. Uh, we can write our own min function. And the problem with that is actually it would have to be a specific type. Um, I'm going to try to figure out what the macro is that does um, that does this. So I think writing our own min function is going to be the least bad option. Uh, God, I hope I don't screw this up. Um, in the sense that the min might be defined somewhere else. Um, if x is less than y, x otherwise y. And I, I like just like this function so much, we're going to put it in one line. And then we'll def go ahead and define a max. I could define it for an array, but that probably is going to get even worse. So if x is greater than y, x otherwise y. Um, yeah. So, and for this, we're going to need max of this, and then another max. This is, it's not inefficient, it's just ugly, it's just stupid. Oh, okay, cool. Let's see if this compiles. Implicit declaration of function min. Now the only thing I see possible is that maybe I need to declare these uh, before I use them. And for this one, we could probably declare it right at the, um, no. Yeah, this is probably a simple enough function, we could do this right here. Although I get the feeling something else is wrong. But it's not, that's it. Okay. I have no idea what this is, okay, east separation, west separation. Um, all right. I think we're done here. We can just go to the printfs now. Remove the printfs. Yep. Oh, I should probably comment that out. No, I'm going to just remove it. I'm going to comment it out. I'm going to be indecisive. I'm going to comment it out. Okay, so now this is the function we want to tell us when eclipses begin and end. So we go back to BC occultations. I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick to 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 get um, because I'm paranoid. And again, I know you can't see what I'm doing. That's okay. No one's watching anyway, so who cares? Um, actually, let's see who is watching. If there's anyone here, wow, there's actually uh, three people here, and then Commander Root, which doesn't count. But for all I know, these people are all not really here. I mean, they could be bots. They could be I don't know. But hello if you're there, if you want to say something, go for it. If not, that's cool. Okay, so now we want to go back over to, um, to VC Occultations and not use uh, Min Corner Eclipse. We have to be a little bit careful here um, because, because we, there's a difference between partial and, uh, and, um, and total eclipses. So let's see which one we want to get here real quick. So it's going to be... Um, okay. I'm going to comment this out. It's going to be clips around the world. ET. Okay, so all of these are going to be the same, actually. Planet ID. Moon ID. Okay, good. And then the only thing we want to know is we do we want the max or the min. Um, so it is decreasing. If, so if we get the min here and it is less than negative 1, means there's a total eclipse. Um, if the max is less than negative one, we have a uh, total eclipse on the whole planet. Let's, however, get the, the max of the two. And 
no, sorry, the min of the two, and if the min is less than one, that means the eclipse has started somewhere on the planet. So let's do the min, and let's look for when it's less than zero. Uh, so when the min is less than zero, the idea is that we've started a partial eclipse somewhere on the planet, and on the side of the planet that's actually um, it's actually facing the sun. Um, I would take any amount of bets that this is not going to work. I mean, it'll compile and it'll give us results. It's not going to work, though. Okay, so this tells us uh, at January 21st on 037. Um, actually, I don't know what it tells us because I haven't actually looked at my parameters. To um, 746. Okay, so this says um, the moon is the uh, the Earth is the moon here. Wait, what? The Earth is the moon here. I just said that. Um, oh, hang on. Um, I may need to create a little bit more accurate. Uh, oh no, our moon is the moon, the sun is the sun, and the planet is our planet. I probably need to be a little bit more clear um, as to what I mean by these terms. Even in the, uh, I, I've been clarified that in the program, I probably need to. Let me go ahead and just do that. It's bugging me too much. Um, observer. Actually, we can probably do this. Sun equals uh, light source. I'm not going to say shiny thing in the directions. Planet equals um, shadowed target. That's clever. Shadowed target. Okay. And I haven't really changed anything in the program itself, so I mean, start year and end year are pretty pretty basic. So um, it's the Earth that's being shadowed. Um, the moon is doing the, uh, no, sorry. No, it's not the shadowy target. That's the observer. Shadower, the thing that does the shadowing. So this is a lunar eclipse because the Earth is shadowing the moon, is blocking the moon, is blocking the sun from the moon. So God willing, we should be able to say that the partial eclipse of the moon begins at this time and, the and, the and ends at this time. And... Uh, you know, any number of odds say this is not going to be correct. Hmm. I think I'm going to use time and date. I think they have slightly better maps. Okay. What does one eclipse look like? Um... Okay, so according to this, the partial eclipse began at uh, January 21st at 3.33. We say it began at January 31st at 2.37. Not good. Uh, although that is when the penumbral eclipse began. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, that's actually not bad. 2.36, and we say the penumbral eclipse. Um, right, so the penumbral eclipse means a part of the moon is being partly obscured um, by by the Earth, so that is that is correct. This is what we're looking for. And the partial eclipse ended, penumbral at 7:48, and we say that happened at 7:46. That is not bad at all. That is a pretty damn good, um, pretty damn good, pretty pretty good, pretty damn good prediction for assuming uh, spherical orbits. So it looks like we might be in good shape here. Um, let's flip it and let's look at the solar eclipses for, uh, nah, I'm bored. Let's look at it for next year. Okay. So the first solar eclipse we say begins somewhere in the world partiality at that time and ends somewhere in the world partiality, uh, at that time. Okay. So let's, why is that June? Is there an eclipse coming up in June? No, maybe there's not actually. Um, Let's see if we can just do it right from here. Clips information. Eclipses. Lunar. Penumbral lunar. What? Where's the rest of them? That's pretty bad of them to not be showing all of them. Um... 
I guess we can see a list of all pla ellipses and tra planet transits worldwide, but I'm not too happy about that. Lunar, lunar. Okay, so June 20. Wow. So it really is the first one. And if it goes from 356 um, to uh, whatever time, we are going to be pretty confident about s at least a portion of this. Um, 346 is the start. 934 is the end. So 346 we nailed. N 551 is... Um, interesting. So we think the eclipse ends at 551, which is bad. We, we nailed the start of it, though. Um, oh, we were so close. Let me make sure we are printing the beginning and the end. I'm, I'm sure we are, though. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yep, we are. Um, wait. We don't actually need to call this anymore. That shouldn't make a difference, though, but let's do it anyway. Let's make sure that that call may have messed something up. But if it did, it's horrible programming on my part. Okay. Start time, nailed it. End time, did not nail it. Yeah, okay, we're still wrong there. Um, okay, and I only say this when I'm about to end the stream. I've been streaming for, oh, only an hour? I'm lazy. Uh, only been streaming for an hour. We are going to go ahead and call it for right now. Our next big step is, of course, to figure out why we are not getting uh, the end time of the eclipse correct. Um, and that, that, should be, that should be fairly interesting to see what's going on there. My thinking is um, we are computing the, uh, well, obviously we're computing the uh, minimum value incorrectly somehow. Um, and let me make sure that val equals zero is the minimum value, because uh, that would be a very simple error, easy to fix. Yeah, it is the min. Um, yeah, so we need to figure out what's going on there. Um, And we are actually... No, we do recompute the uh, the positions every time, so the fact that the, uh, the Earth is rotating uh, should not be giving us a problem. But that might be it as well. Uh, it might be that uh, the Earth's rotation, we don't take that into account. Okay, thank you very much for watching the stream. We should be back. I won't promise anything. I, plan I hope to be back later today. So I will talk to you guys later. Thank you.